Tommy, where would you be without your table saw? Uh, I don't know where I'd be because we use them all the time. And this is a nice big one that we keep in the shop. Yeah. Because it's very heavy. You need two guys to carry it around at least. Cabinet saw. Expensive. So a lot yeah. of people don't work off of one of these. Right. They work off of something more portable. Small portable saws are great. They're on the job site all the time. We have a few of them going all day long and yeah. back and forth. And this one's pretty cool because it's a battery operated Oh, is one. that right? Yeah, you don't even have to plug it in. So you plug the battery in and you're good for a long time, a lot a of cuts. Way. So it's also one of the most dangerous tools out there. So you always have to be thinking about safety. Let's talk about some of the techniques when making cuts to keep us safe. All right, well, first of all, you have this, this protection right here to keep the sawdust off of you. Try to keep your hands out of there. All right, blade. There's a riving knife down here. This and this riving knife, as you push the wood through, it lessens the chance of it collapsing on itself or twisting in and then pushing back. Right, which is kickback, which we do not want. Right, and these little teeth right here yeah. on these spring-loaded things, these are called pawls, right. and they actually will dig into the grain if the wood wants to kick back. And you can see when you push the wood through there. Right. As you run the board through, there's a piece on each side of the blade, and it comes through, and these little spring-loaded teeth pick up. Yeah. And then if this thing was going to kick back, it would, the teeth would dig in and it won't kick back at you. Right. All right. So let's make sure that we've got those on anytime we're using it. Um, a rip cut. Let's talk about that. Yep. A rip cut is when you go and you set the rip fence, the distance from the blade. And let's say I make it here and now I want to run it through and I want to make a cut. Yep. Now, what you don't want to do when you're doing a rip cut is, first of all, you want, I always keep my hand here, and I want to make sure I'm pushing the, the, the wood against the rip fence. Yep. I'm not looking at the cut. I'm looking at the position of the board in relationship to the rip fence. If there's a gap or a space on one end or this end, I'm not holding it straight. Right. So push it up there tight, although it is possible that they're not parallel, right? Yes, and that's when you have to think about your adjustments. Yep. So you want to make sure that this fence is parallel with that blade. Let me take this off so you can see right here. Yeah, we've got the battery out, we've got this thing shut down. Yep. yep. All right, so the first thing I would do when I take out a saw, I eyeball it and I put the blade up as high as it'll go. Mm -hmm. And I just eyeball it and I can look like, all right, so now if I lock that in, I look at the space between the blade here and the blade here to make sure that it's parallel. Looks pretty good, right? Looks pretty good, but I can check it. So by checking it, I'm going to create a space right here. And the space is big enough. First thing I would check is the distance from my rip fence to one of these two dados, okay? Mm -hmm. I check here, it's four and a half. It's four and a half. Now that's just random. I locked it in. This is, has to be locked in. The other thing I want to do is I want to make sure that it's parallel to the blade mm -hmm. because, you know, these saws get thrown around. They come out of the trucks, you guys drop them, they pick them up, they it throw happens. them around. It happens. Yep. So what you want to do is you want to pick one of the teeth. Yep. All right, because you have offsetting teeth. Let me show you this combination blade right here. And if you look at the teeth, one points to the right, one points to the left. Yep. All right, so if I measure from the wrong tooth, there's a little bit of a diff in the gonna, distance. That's going to show me that I'm out of parallel. Okay. So to find that I'm in parallel, I'm going to pick a tooth. I'm going to say right there. So now I have nine and a half inches from yep. this side of this tooth. I'm going to take this tooth and I'm going to rotate it back here. Mm. And I'm going to measure again. All right. Nine and a half inches. Gotcha. So this fence is parallel to the saw, but really parallel to the blade. Right, which is key. And that's right. actually going to help us be safer by minimizing kickback. Right. Now, when making a rip cut or a cross cut, I like to first set the saw blade so that it just comes through. All right? Maybe quarter to a half an inch up at the most. Mm -hmm. All right, that lessens the chance for kickback. Right, and we want that blade height set correctly whether we're doing a rip cut or a cross cut. Exactly. But when we're doing a cross cut, we're going to take the fence pretty much out of the equation. Right. And let me show you here what, you, what happens if I use the fence and the blade is there. Let's say I want to cut a bunch of boards and I want them to be like eight inches long. I would never take this piece here and run this through because look what can happen. If I'm pushing this with more leverage and holding this, 
with less leverage, this board can jam in between the two mm -hmm. and kick back. And when it kicks back, it happens so quick. I've seen it happen on the job site. I've seen it happen in school when I was a kid. A kid was cutting the saw, pushing the board through, it kicked back, and the blade was not up too high so he didn't lose his fingers. Right. He just nicked them all. Yeah, it could drag your hand across the blade. It'll definitely throw that back at you. It's a bad situation. Right, and that's why I like the blade to just come up a little bit. So we don't use the fence. Right, you don't use the fence. You use this to make your cross cut. You put it on here. You hold it down firm to the table and you pull it together and you push it across. Leaving a gap here between the end of the fence. Right. Now, let's say I want to cut multiple pieces that length. Yep. First thing you do is you take the, a scrap piece of wood, you take a measurement from the scrap piece of wood to the edge of the blade that you want, whatever it is. I then take this scrap piece of wood and I slide it all the way down to the very beginning of the rip fence. Mm -hmm. So now I have a guide or a stop that I can put my board against, hold it tight to the crosscut guide. That's going to set our length. Right. Now you see that this board is against this stop before it meets the blade. Mm -hmm. Now when I push it through, as I go through, there's a the gap board right here. Will, there's a gap. The board can fall off, and I can take and move it out of the way. Nice. It won't get caught on the blade. Good. All right, Tommy. Well, I love to see the battery coming into the uh, in the Vogue here for these saws. Yeah, and me too. Some good safety tips. Thank you. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.